Karen, Karen, thank you for uh, giving us the optimistic opportunity side of what we can look forward to with the coming down of the evil empire. And maybe it will come faster than even Robert Higgs thinks, because the government seems to be burning through capital at incredibly crescendoing uh, rates. So we can maybe look forward to this very quickly or before we think. But I think we are going to be surprised by it. And that's why we have got to be ready. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I was going to point out is, by the way, in that early version of the emperor is not wearing any clothes from Augustine, there's always a libertarian geek in the audience that's going to correct your attribution. It's uh, book four of the Confessions. So as a Catholic girl, you can do three Hail Marys for that. <laughs> okay, okay we'll, we'll, we'll do it. <laughs> good, good morning. <laughs> uh, as a side note to your, uh, about the unfettered capitalism, another good book that people might want to read, may, or may already know about it, Capitalism, the Unknown Ideal, written by Ayn Rand and oh, yeah. her, her cohorts, which contains an interesting essay by Alan Greenspan, denoun oh. denouncing the Fed and for the gold standard. Uh, actually, the qu question is off topic. I'm just curious, what happened to your radio show? I didn't have time to keep keep doing it. I'll, I'll be back on the radio. I'll be doing it more. But I, I got I got to the point where uh, the dogs were barking and the cats were scratching and I couldn't I couldn't do that thing. It, it's just too much. But I will be we'll do more of that. Yeah. And that's part of that technology thing. The very fact that I can sit in my cluttered uh, you know room with the computer and the cats and the dogs and the kids, you know, and speak to people via the internet and take calls from all amazing stuff. Wonderful stuff. I think we're all looking for ways to protest, and I'd like to share with you uh, one of mine. It starts with an essay that Walt Whitman wrote called, I See the President Almost Every Day. And that was during the Civil War. And Lincoln would uh, leave the White House because it was uh, low land, lots of mosquitoes. And he would go up Massachusetts Avenue with a detail of uh, 24 soldiers, and he would work there during the day and go back with uh, 24 soldiers, with, led by a lieutenant with his sword drawn. Well, today there are lots of motorcades that uh, go up and down Washington, D.C., and Massachusetts Avenue, Connecticut Avenue, Pennsylvania Avenue are the big ones. And the configurations of the motorcades differ Maybe you have six outriders, maybe you have two cars, so you don't know who is in which car. It uh, decreases the uh, probability by half. And these things can uh, uh, stop traffic for as much as uh, 45 minutes. And I uh, enjoy seeing these things because I have this arthritic middle finger and I'm the, only, I'm the only fellow with a coat and tie so attired. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. I wanted to ask you about language. Uh, I noticed you made a distinction between Southern capitalism and Northern industrialism. And th there's been a lot of uh, discussion at this conference in particular about maybe a new a union between uh, the left and libertarians. One of the things that I've noticed is this conflict, uh, um, you know, confusion uh, between the words corporatism and cap capitalism. And, and on the left, they tend to use them interchangeably. Um, I'm wondering if you have, if you thought about this problem of language and and how we could address it to help uh, educate the left and bring them. I mean. I think that we often agree with them if you read some tracts where they're criticizing capitalism and you just replace the word capitalism with corporatism. That's the approach to take. And I didn't use that word corporatism, but I figured there was going to be a, a question. Because even when I talk about capitalism, what, do you, what are we thinking of? We were, a lot of us are thinking of not the pure free market, free commerce but we're thinking about what we see every day, which is Halliburton has a buddy that has a buddy that calls a congressman that gets a war, that gets profits. Um, so yeah, there's a big difference. I like the word corporatism. I think it's a good uh, label <laughs> that, that we can uh, find some common ground with the left who are criticizing generalized capitalism when really, and, and you know, folks on the left, right, anywhere, you know, we're all the same. 
if we have something to sell, we'd like to be able to sell it at the best price we can get by people who want to make that free exchange. Nobody doesn't love that. Okay, everybody loves that. Even the far right leftists love that. So um, we got to build on that uh, that understanding and oppose what we actually see going on, which uh, sometimes we call it all capitalism. It's not all capitalism. Uh, thanks. Thank you very much for that. That was very good. Um, you say the American empire is ending. Uh, I, I agree. Uh, what's your opinion on what we're going to see as the empire does end? Will, it, will the empire tend to lash out and you know, start more wars, in your opinion? Uh, or do you think it's going to be more of a quiet dissipation? Um. They're going to start more wars, but it's not going to be overseas wars because Americans aren't going to let them do that, other than Iran. Okay, we have, we're not ready to stop that, apparently. But um, I think the wars that they're going to start are going to be here against us. And, and, and do, do not kid yourself that, that uh, any bureaucratic entity, and particularly government, as well-armed and well-funded and as arrogant as our government is, is going to uh, lay down. It's not going to lay down. And, and, uh, but I think the overseas wars... Our mindset, whether it doesn't matter what political party, the mindset in this country is we don't want any more foreign interventions. Not even wars. We don't want interventions. We want our boys and girls back home, and, and we want to stop giving Halbert and all this money. We want to fix the levees and dikes or whatever it is in, in uh, New Orleans. So, because of that attitude, I think that it does have a, a, a public restraining. Uh, Ability and, and the next president, even if it's John McCain, is not going to uh, be free to do whatever he damn well pleases overseas. But um, the survival uh, instinct is just like with uh, any other living entity. It's 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 uh, uh, passionate, okay. And uh, uh, it, it, we we need to be careful. And this is why I think it's important to not in, to to divest ourselves of. Uh, the, the things, the, the, the trappings in the uh, economy of empire uh, and, of a, and of a big state because we're going to be, if we depend on the state for everything that we have, we are conscripts for the state. When, when push comes to shove, it's very difficult to say, well, you know, I, I, my father was a little child during the Depression, he doesn't even remember it, but he remembers the stories. He said, we, had, we bought a hundred pound bag of beans in October and that's what we lived on all winter long. Well, you know, I don't know if that's 100% true, but how many of us are willing to do that, to, to, sac to, to have those inconveniences, as Sheldon mentioned? You know, uh, it's, it's a lot to ask, so we, we need to get ready for uh, 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 the government survival uh, death throes here, which will be against all the people. Um, and it's a great opportunity also, because nobody likes to be, uh, you know, we're already taxed to death, we're sick of these cops, we're sick of everything. Um, we aren't going to like it. We will have many, many allies in this pushback against government, but that's where it's going to come to. I think that's where the aggression is going to be. Um, I don't know, though. I, I certainly don't know. I, I think we should be prepared for that, though. If nothing else, it, it won't be a bad thing if we're prepared for it. That's pretty scary and depressing. I was trying to be optimistic because Bumper gave me that speech topic and it was positive. I wanted to keep positive. But yeah, we, we, ought, we ought to be a little bit, we have to be preparing ourselves, I think, uh, psychologically and to some extent economically for uh, the death throes of a grand centralized state. It's coming and it'll, it will be faster than I think we're expecting. Karen, if I could ask a biographical question, mm -hmm. what, how have your attitudes toward the military and militarism and such changed since you were actually in the service? And were there any particular um, epiphany moments or, or what drove you mm -hmm. um, to make those changes? Yeah. Well, uh, actually a number of different things. I, I uh, of course, was raised conservative and to kind of expect the government would be full of waste. In my time in the military, almost from the very beginning, what I saw was massive uh, waste. Some fraud, mostly waste um, and incompetence. But, you know, that was my job. It was a Cold War and I really liked it. Now, when the Cold War ended, I was midway through my career. I had 10 years on the Cold War and then 10 years post-Cold War. And what might have been called an epiphany, although it's a pretty grand term, but um, my expectations were that after the Warsaw Pact collapsed, and it did collapse very rapidly once the wall came down and the Soviets were free and whatnot. So I, I expected NATO to follow suit.